Hello, my name is Michelle and this is Julie and we're from Splashes Spa World and we're going to explain the chemical system that we put you on to maintain clear and healthy water. When you first get your spa from Splashes, you will receive a simple, easy to follow guide of how to run your chemicals. And when you first get your spa, obviously you're going to fill it with fresh water. Fresh water comes out of the tap, usually quite acidic, so we have to balance the water. And we want to teach you how to maintain healthy water, bacteria free and so on. So we'll go through this together. Step one, when you first start your spa, you need to test the water, just for your own information about where the pH and alkalinity lies. Like I said, it's usually acidic in Sydney tap water. So if you put your test strips in quickly like that, pull them up and hold them up against the chart, you'll notice that uh, there will more than likely be no chlorine. Now this is actually the showroom spa, so we've just added a little bit of chlorine, so it's showing up, and obviously our pH and our community is balanced. But what you will probably find is that your pH colour will be a really light yellow, and uh, that means the water is acidic. If you leave the water acidic for long term, number one, the chlorine will burn off too quickly to do its job and kill bacteria. Number two, you can cause long term damage to your pumps, such as the seals wearing down. So we want, obviously, the pH to be balanced. So we're looking for a dark orange in this range, which is around 7.6. If your pH was too high, uh, it would be a very dark pink colour. Now if you have a dog, you can put these test strips on your dog's tongue and you'll see what happens with high alkalinity and high pH. It goes pink immediately. And I think that's why dogs can lick their wounds and things like that. Anyway, we want to get this dark orange, not pink, which is too high for the, the alkalinity, and not yellow, which means acidic water. So the way to do that in Sydney water is to add alkalinity increaser, which is sodium bicarbonate. Your chemical sheet is based on 1,000 litres, so if you have a spa that's more than that, you need to adjust your measurements. And we don't consider that this is rocket science at all, so you don't need to get your measuring spoon. A heat tablespoon, if you're a cook, looks like a heat tablespoon, so you can just measure it out to the lid, uh, but it equates to 30 grams, one heat tablespoon. So put your main filtering pump on, which in your spa you'll notice the flap goes down on your filter. So whatever pump that is, I'm assuming it's that pump there, and then you throw in three of these. I'll just put one in because this is already dust, we don't want to change it. But if it was a thousand litres, I would put three tablespoons in. That's uh, step number two. Going right along your sheet, step number three is to put in Nature 2. Now Nature 2 inhibits bacterial growth and it's made up mainly of silver. The main thing is to put this near the filter, not up inside the filter, just nearby the filter. Depending on the type of spa you have, it's usually just resting in the basket in the filter area. You only really need the central part, the other bits you don't need, you can throw them away. So what this does is it actually uh, inhibits bacterial growth similar to the way sandy soil would make it difficult for tomatoes to grow. Having this in the water makes it difficult for bacteria to grow. So that means you can actually get in the spa, chlorine free, and it will inhibit the bacterial growth long enough for you to have a safe spa unless you have a heavy bather load. If you have a heavy bather load, then we suggest you add, in, add chlorine into the spa before you get in. A heavy bather load would be considered more than three people or randoms that come in that are not family members. So that's what that does. It doesn't actually kill bacteria, okay? And that we'd like you to understand what everything does, so that you're not just throwing things in there hoping for the best, which is often what happens with people who own spas. They don't quite understand what they're doing. 
Now, if ever you want to kill bacteria, the, th the only thing in the whole system that does that is your spar lithium or lithium hypochlorite is the active ingredient. This is actually chlorine. Now, we're putting you on a chlorine-free system in terms of you can get into the spa and enjoy the spa without chlorine in it, but you must add it when you get out. Why do you add it when you get out? Because you actually bring bacteria into the water. If you leave bacteria into a hot water spa, you will override the system and grow and the water will become cloudy. So if ever you want to clear the water, you need to add chlorine. So for a 1,000 litre spa, it's simply two heat tablespoons. If you have a 1,500 litre spa, it would be three heat tablespoons or so on. Once again, a rough measurement is fine. This is designed to burn off in six to eight hours, unless you have a lot of bacteria in the water. It will burn off quicker. The chlorine burns off according to how much bacteria is in there. I've seen spas when we first get there that have been used before the water's been adjusted, and I put chlorine in there, and within half an hour, it's burnt off. So if you see your water is cloudy, and you want to make sure that there's enough chlorine in there to clear it, use your test strips and look for a good purple, solid purple colour around three parts, between three and five parts per million. So it'll be a nice solid purple colour. If it's not purple, then it's not going to clear the water. If you had a big um, night where a lot of people have been in there and the water's not clear the next day, I would definitely clean the filters as well. Because if you want clear water, you must have clean filters and enough chlorine in there to clear it. Nothing else will actually clear it in the system. The other, uh, those, uh, the other product we use, which is step five, unique to splashes, is Spa Magic. Spa Magic we actually import from America, and what, is, what it is essentially is an enzyme that breaks down body fats. You put your bulk amount into the spa when you first fill it, and uh, you don't have to add more in the four month period unless you add fresh water. So we're suggesting that you add 380 mils per thousand litres. So we, you get a complimentary 475 mil bottle. So it's most of the bottle, about an inch on the bottom is left. If you have a 1500 litre star, you pour it all in. So this product will maintain the pH and alkalinity. You will not have any concerns about body fats coating the pipe work in your spa like you would have if you didn't have this product. It will soften the water and protect you from rashes and itching. Essentially, it makes the spa water safe because it's removing the food that bacteria likes to feed on. Bacteria loves to feed on body fats. So this will remove that and you will never have to flush your spa of body fats. It also helps the filters to work better as well. That's your complete start-up procedure. We suggest you actually wait until it's 30 degrees for this to mix in, and it'll start to pull impurities out of the water straight away. Over the period of the four months, the main thing, as we said, is to add chlorine after you. So if you forget that, expect cloudy water. The other thing we recommend you use is Spa Shop. Now, Spa Shop does not kill bacteria as many people think it does. What does it do? It actually removes chloramines and bather waste. How do these form into the spa? If you get into the water, you might find, imagine this little bottle here is a microscopic piece of skin or an undissolved solid that's floating in the water. When you add your chlorine to kill bacteria as you should, it will see this undissolved solid and bond onto it and wrap around it, similar to the way a spider would wrap around its prey. That's going to hold this bather waste in the water, and it's now become a chloramine. Chloramines are the toxic byproduct of chlorine and must be removed out of the water, or it starts to smell. So the recommendation is to put one tablespoon, each tablespoon per thousand litres once a week. And turn all your pumps on, add air into the, into the jet, so you turn your air venturi dials, and that will add air to the, to the spa, and you'll find that that will oxygenate the water and pull the chlorine off this bather waste back into its usable form and oxidise this out. So you must take the cover off, otherwise the bather waste will hit the cover and fall back in. So 
spa shop once a week, chlorine after use, one tablespoon once a week, two tablespoons after use for a thousand litres. Over the course of the four month period, we do recommend you change a little bit of water out of the spa, say five buckets a week, and add five buckets of fresh water in, in there per week. And that keeps the total dissolved solids levels down. When water comes out of the tap, initially it's around two to 300 parts per million. And after the course of time, as you're using it, total dissolved solids levels do increase. So it's much like you would imagine a teacup. You put a cup of tea in there. Once it's full, you can't put more tea in there. So once your spa water is clogged, you can't add more chemicals, you can't add more bathing waste. It's a clogged vessel and you've got to dump it. A good indication is when you have, you have a tennis ball and you throw it into your spa water and it bounces back out, it's full. Get rid of it. That's actually not good. Over the, the course of the four months, every two weeks, we recommend a high pressure hose on your filter unless needed before that. And just check your troubleshooter on the back page for more information. Thank you.